How could the crypto economy fall flat? The lack of a way to safely secure, store, and move crypto assets. That's how. We'll discuss on this episode of In the Know. I'm Justin Domini. Cryptocurrency is a digital form of currency that changes the traditional way financial institutions hold and manage our money. As an asset, cryptocurrency is truly virtual, which begs the question, how do you secure these virtual assets and how do you make them accessible to owners in real time? To answer these questions, my colleague Pete Settles recently spoke to Sal Ternulo. Sal is the co-leader of KPMG's Crypto Asset Services and had great insights to share as he dives into the expanding crypto ecosystem. Here's that conversation. I'm Pete Settles, and I'm here today with Sal Trinello. Sal is a co-leader of KPMG's crypto asset services practice, which has just issued a new paper called Cracking Crypto Custody. We're going to talk to Sal today about the new paper and the critical role that custody plays in the success or failure of the crypto asset industry. It's great to be here with you, Sal. Thank you, Pete. It's a pleasure to be here. Your new report leads off by stating that crypto assets are no longer an exotic instrument or sideshow. And with their broad market acceptance, they will help enable new ecosystems of commerce and trade. Can you expand on why custody is so important and crucial for the success of crypto assets? Absolutely. The custody capability in the context of crypto has really hit mainstream as the institutionalization of the asset class has continued. The last six months has really seen mainstream adoption and a spotlight back on crypto, both crypto native assets in the context of Bitcoin, but increasingly in the context of digital assets where blockchain infrastructure is used to represent or digitize an underlying currency. So we see a lot of traction around the central bank issued digital currency landscape and in the private sector with the emergence of things like Libra. And the consistent capability that underpins all of these digital assets, irregardless of type, is custody. So how do you securely and safely custody crypto assets is a question that not only financial services is dealing with, but organizations across industry lines, everywhere that payment rails are applicable, we're starting to see custody capabilities being adopted. You describe in the paper the four key building blocks that custody is built upon. Can you expand on that here? The paper kind of highlights four building blocks that we view for successful custody and institutional custody adoption. The first is looking to the point I made previously around next generation security and resiliency. How do you protect those assets in a way that gives an asset manager with $5 trillion of value comfort that you're protecting his assets? This idea has been near and dear to the public media dynamic in the context of continuous hacks of cryptocurrency exchanges where that core capability of custody had been exploited. You talk about how improvement in performance, scalability, privacy, and interoperability of the blockchain infrastructure is driving the increased tokenization of traditional assets. Can you elaborate on that point? Through the crypto winter over the last two years, we've seen substantial progress in build out of core institutional technologies that solve the problems that we've traditionally faced around scalability, performance, and privacy. And as these challenges have been solved from a technical perspective, they've laid the foundation for infrastructure that supports the tokenization of assets across the asset taxonomy. So we're no longer talking about just crypto native assets. We're talking about digital assets like CBDC, central bank issued digital currency, as well as more tangible assets like real estate. Can we tokenize the ownership interest in a real estate asset and represent that ownership interest on a blockchain? And today the answer is yes. Very interesting. What are some of the technical issues that the crypto industry currently faces with regard to custody? So when you think about the technology challenges around the custody capability, it really comes in two veins. Everyone that provides a custody solution is looking to balance security and availability. You want highly secure solutions that provide comfort to your customers that the assets custodied within your system will not be compromised by a hack or a malicious actor, but you also need to guarantee that they're highly available. So how do you find a balance from a technical perspective to protect assets with the highest rigor of security while also creating a transaction model that allows for those assets to be moved as the asset owner or asset manager sees fit? 
And that balance of security and availability is something that we continue to see as a core issue organizations are facing in the market. But excitingly, there's a number of technical solutions and breakthroughs that are coming to play in 2020 that may alleviate and kind of find that sweet spot of balance between security and availability. Can you talk about the challenge of building and scaling custody offerings for institutional customers? The institutional custody dynamic layers on the complexity of established financial regulations and compliance expectations in that context on top of a already new transformative and difficult technical challenge around custody. So you're not only talking about infrastructure and the technology itself, you're now talking about how this capability integrates into established core banking applications within that institution, establish compliance reporting structures that are built on top of those core banking applications. So it's about how do you create a seamless integration model where custody is part of the overall operational landscape, but is integrated behind the scenes. And those are the challenges that we're facing in the institutional landscape today is really around that integration and that seamless interface and user experience around digital assets. Can you talk about KPMG's crypto asset services practice and how you're helping companies today? Our journey in the crypto custody space started early relative to most of our competitors. We were on the ground floor of some of the first crypto exchanges in 2015 and 2016, building out security models and compliance structures around this custody capability. So we were deploying traditional KPMG services from our technology risk, our cyber practice, and actually enabling those enterprises to scale their business in secure and compliant ways. What that enabled us to do was to understand the design of those capabilities in a way that not only told us what they're doing right or what they're doing wrong, but gave us a footprint of understanding from which we can actually build. So over the last year, we've been building relationships with potential strategic partners that build third-party technology capabilities and looking at what the role that KPMG can play in the context of system integration of those capabilities to underpin that core banking environment I described previously. Two years ago, KPMG issued a report saying that the institutionalization of crypto assets was critical to its success. Is this becoming reality? Absolutely. I'm proud and happy to sit here today and say we were probably early with our prediction, but the timing of that paper launch coincided with the initiation of the next crypto winter, which ironically during that time period is when actual progress is made in terms of the technology capability itself. So when the scrutiny from the public sector and the media falls off Bitcoin's price exceeding 10K and hitting almost 20K, people start to hunker down and actually build. You know, we predicted that institutionalization would happen in 2018. We've watched first movers over the last two years move into this space in a compelling way. Some of our large clients in the space have really made strides in transforming their business to new revenue verticals enabled by engagement with crypto assets and blockchain technology. We continue to expect to see that demand curve and we're excited. Our business is poised for what I would argue to be explosive growth. Thanks so much, Sal, for taking the time today to share your thoughts on this emerging and exciting industry. Thanks so much for taking the time, Pete. As always, thanks for listening. To view the Cracking Crypto Custody white paper, please go to visit.kpmg.us forward slash crypto. That's visit.kpmg.us forward slash crypto. In the Know is now available wherever your favorite podcasts are found. Feel free to download and subscribe via the Apple Podcast app, Google Play, or Stitcher. Simply search KPMG's In The Know, and we'll see you next time on In The Know.